So, hello everybody. Welcome back to a special kind of podcast where, um, not exactly an interview, more of a retrospective. Um, here with me, I got the returning guest, Xander Cannon, and we'll be talking about um, his work, Kaiju Max, which finally completed like two months ago. So um, this podcast is a little late, but whatever, you know, you make do. I've just you now know. had the time to just think about my my feelings about it. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm finally you know. ready to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it, what, what, it was like seven years, you know? You, yeah. You, you need a lot of time to kind of like absorb what just happened, right? <laughs> right, yeah. It's like a car crash. Right. I had to, I needed some time to think. <laughs> right, and for um, just for the quick people who, who are insane and just watch podcasts based on comics they haven't read, Kaiju Max is a series created by Xander Cannon over here, and it's a prison drama with kaijus, you know, the giant... You know, everything that stems from, like, Godzilla and his, and all the other wacky creatures, you know. And um, I think, uh, I think, uh, I want to, first of all, I want to ask you, Xander, how does it feel? <laughs> how, how does it feel? It was seven years, what was it, 36 issues? Yeah. How's... Which doesn't seem like, it seems like there should be more, right? You know, like, I think we're all kind of used to thinking... You know, I, in 10s or 12s, you know, for a year. But, like, you know, I mean, that, I didn't have time to make any more. I'll tell you that much. It's um, it's very, like, um, it's kind of this, I'm not going to, I guess the best I can phrase is, like, an amor, amateur mentality that, I, I, not really, like, amateur, but very common mentality that people might, who don't know how long it takes to make a comic, will be like, yeah, you can make one issue in a month. Right. Which technically... <laughs> Technically true. Yeah, I mean, right? I, I have made one issue in one month before, but like you're not making that next issue in a month. That's for sure because you're just you're burnt out. You know, like like I was really far behind. Uh, there's an there's an issue like in the middle of the run, thir- season three, where I was way behind and I had three weeks to make an issue, and I, it, it's crazy to me that I didn't just say, oh, push it. You know, like something like that. But I mean, I just. I was so stressed and I just, you know, like, I just remember like one morning, just like not wanting to get up, but just like putting my head below my pillow and just like, like, you know, thinking at like light speed on what was going to be this story for this issue and like kind of getting it straight in my head, writing it down as soon as I got up and then going to the studio and just like starting to lay it out. And I just, yeah, I finished it in like three weeks. Yeah. And I mean, I had to like, I had to like, uh, copy and paste, uh, like the background, the sky, like I had a storm clouds and I just copied and pasted them. And mm-hmm. I was thinking like, oh, such a cheap trick, such a cheap, cheap trick. And then I was <laughs> like, and then I read the issue and I'm like, it's fine. What if, if I had, I'd be so mad at myself if I redrew all of those clouds. Like it just, it, it, if it makes you feel any better, I didn't even notice. Right. No, no but, one did. <laughs> if you but, spend enough time on the right stuff, like I feel the thing that takes me the longest is writing. And I feel like sometimes if you just, if you kind of just let yourself go, all right, every line of dialogue is really just something is supposed to sound like something someone just came up with in the moment. And so if, if you kind of let that be your baseline, you can kind of let go of a lot of like, you know, of the fussiness of it. And, and so, yeah, I, I wrote it really fast, but I took the time when I was inking it to make sure that the inks are, you know, the, to the usual quality. And then I blaze through the colors and it's like, you know, it looks just like every other issue, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it was, it was eye opening to me. I mean, I don't know if I really learned those lessons, like if I really internalized them, but I, uh, I did sort of feel like that opened my eyes in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I didn't notice that it, that, um, you were having those dilemmas during those issues. Uh, I'm pretty sure the majority of people like that. I mean, that's the thing, you know, the majority of people don't know, like, the 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 blood sweat and tears or how long you spend on like what panel or pages you know yeah they're just gonna like i mean like let, let, let's admit it they're like what gonna just take under five five minutes to get through an issue and then move on with their life you know sure i mean i try you know my, one of the big goals is to sort of make people slow down enough you know and and I think that I you mean, can do oh, that. Wait, not, a, to, not to say Kaiju Max is, is like is like throwaway trash or nothing. I love Kaiju Max. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get what I mean. I know. I mean, but, you know, every comic is that is that way in a way, you know, and I think that sometimes you can go like, 
you can embrace it and say, all right, I want people to read through this fast. A lot of manga is that way where it's like, you know, I want people to read uh -huh. this fast and I want them to almost have a sense that like when you look at panel one, two, three, it's supposed to feel like a moment, you know, just a moment in time that's kind of animated almost. And I mm -hmm. think that, you know, I was trying to do in uh, part of that, part of I was trying to do that in some places, but it, but I was trying to generally slow people down. It's like, let's have some a lot of dialogue. Let's have a lot of symmetrical panels to slow you down, to sort of keep your eye you know, on this page for just a minute, you know, give people and give people their money's worth in a way, you know, and, and, and each, each issue with a wrap up of sorts, you know, so that you don't sort of feel like you're constantly being set up with a, a, a cliffhanger that then kind of semi resolves in the next issue. I, I, I never really liked that about a lot of comics. I understood why people did it, but I never really liked that when there, we were always being set up with a cliffhanger always being set up with a cliffhanger so i just so much of what i was trying to do on this co on this comic the first comic that i'd really done that i had complete control over is is give people slow people down give them their money's worth make them feel like this is a complete you know like a a well thought a out complete world. story yeah right. a complete story like a beginning a middle and end which is you know there's uh, frankly you know, as, as, especially up to a certain point, there's only so many comics that are like that. Even the best comics, you know, in the 80s, people are like, yeah, start reading on issue 38 and stop reading on issue 119. And then it's a good story. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you, I get what you mean. You yeah, yeah. Needed that inside knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you never get that um, kind of like long, you, it never feels like Kaiju Max never feels stagnant. I'll tell you that much. Right. Like, oh, I feel like you're always good. changing around. You're always expanding the world. You know, and it's so funny you say you don't try to do cliffhangers when I think one of the most memorable things for me about Kaiju Max is the cliffhangers. You know, there's like so many like yeah. cliffhangers in like throughout the issues that I'm thinking like, oh, I can't wait to read the, to read the next one. You know, right. Well, no, I mean, I, I guess I'll, I'll I'll add some nuance to that where I just I, I feel like the I like cliffhangers in the sense that like, OK, we you know, you we ended this we ended this part of the story the the. You know, like, I don't know, like, I, I always want the point after a cliffhanger or after sort of like a moment to be a different type of story. Like it, the the moment after the cliffhanger is going to do its own setups for its own res resolutions and and that the setup and the point before the cliffhanger is still is its own story that resolves its ideas. And it isn't ever just sort of like, oh, issue three gave you half the story and issue four gave you the other half. I, I never really wanted to do that. I wanted them each to have their own story that has co some connection and that the cliffhanger moment, the sort of like the, the middle, you know, that little moment in between is is as minimal as possible. Like you don't have to remember a thousand plot lines necessarily from issue to issue. You know, oh, okay. I try to, I get, you know what I mean? It, it's you're, you're making me rethink cliffhangers a little bit right now. I, <laughs> well, I guess I guess there's I like mean, there's like more a lot meteor. Of yeah. yeah, yeah. There's like more meteor cliffhangers, right? Like cliffhangers that kind of like add something. Okay. And, and there's and there's just there's cliffhangers that are more like shock value. Uh -huh. I guess cliffhangers, you know, like um, I don't know. If, I, I'm pretty sure this is a trope, even though I can't think of one thing that does this. But like any comic where like the last page is someone getting shot. And then the oh, next yeah. issue, they're totally fine. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Matter. <laughs> like, well, well they got, that was just to kind of like grab you, you know. I mean, did you see that mo the movie Misery? Uh, um, the, based on I the am Stephen aware, King novel, I'm aware about Misery. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but you can well, spoil it for me. I don't care. Well, I mean, it's I mean, it, it's no spoilers. It's like a you know a, a crazed fan kidnaps basically Stephen King's stand-in guy, okay. and uh, and she reads the new novel that he uh, that he. Um, Right. Th that he writes. Wow. And, so, and so like and and she keeps talking about how he cheated, like he he cheated when he made th this happen. And like it's like the cliff, the old cliffhangers in the ser in the radio or in the, the movie serials were like, you know, the, the, the hero drives his car off a cliff. But then in the next one, it says he jumped free at the last moment. That's cheating. You know, like she gets really intense about it. And it was awesome. It's the movie's awesome. But like uh, but I just I think that that's I mean, an unhinged character is saying it, but it's like, yeah, I mean, we feel that way where it's like, we it, want, we valid. want there to be real, <laughs> real, you know, we want there to be real consequences and real context for things that happen. It's like, mm -hmm. you can't just cheat your way out of stuff, especially if you, if you're betting on people's, uh, you know, investment to, to keep them, to keep them reading. 
Right, right. Okay, so um, um, I guess um, I, I was gonna before we go into more in depth about each season. Okay. I, I did want to, um, as an artist, I want to compliment you for um, getting this far. Thirty six <laughs> issues isn't isn't that easy. No. You know, and um, and as a fan, I want to say, I um, I'm gonna tell you this much, because um. I actually, um, while reading it, I finished reading it. I spent the last two days going through all 36 issues, writing notes. They're not extensive notes, but like, um, just uh, it, it made me appreciate the series much more, to be honest. Because I, I feel like something was kind of lost with like the monthly release. I mean, that's not like your fault. That's just like the nature of um, right. And I hope you have whatnot. I hope you have big like air quotes for monthly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, monthly, like, uh, you know, but... Big ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, but in, on the reread, like, I managed to appreciate a lot of things way more. I managed to, like, catch things a lot more. I managed to, like, see a lot of more foreshadowing to appreciate a lot of moments more, you know? Yeah. And I think, yeah, because you, you come up with all these, like, really good, like, plot threads and, like, where each character is going. And on a monthly release, I tend to, like, forget like okay who's who's doing what who's alive who's dead right who's um who's like still going through character growth you know it's well, it's all these like million things that i mean that it, i forget yeah you're you know? re- and, I, and you're reading 10 comic books a month or more or whatever you know like so you you've got all these storylines you're keeping track of not to mention netflix and whatever but like yeah i mean i'm only writing this one and so it's like i it really i I probably tend to overestimate people's investment, like especially on a, you know, for the serialized comic part, you know, like that I think that, oh yeah, they're going to catch that. And it's like, yeah, they might, or they might not. I mean, hopefully, pe- like you say, people catch it when they reread it as a, right. you know, as a, as a whole thing. Um, it, but yeah, I mean, it's, I, I definitely tend to sort of overestimate how, how closely people are paying attention. <laughs> I mean, th- I mean, eh, that's fine. I mean, I think it makes the reread a lot better. It makes mm-hmm. you like appreciate the work a lot more, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, also I did when I finished reading all of it, I like ranked all the seasons. Okay. Right. Yeah. So from like, I mean, they're all good. They're all good seasons, but like from like the best to like, okay, the, to get you thinking about that but i'm not going to tell you that just yet i'm not going to tell you in what order i i consider the right. best seasons i can I rank really them just... I, I rank them too you know like it's, i feel like well, we too. can rank there's them at some, the end that could be like the, our little or, a, or our little certain things yeah yeah we'll rank them at the end okay right yeah yeah you have to be insane not to like want to just rank everything you do <laughs> okay but yeah let's uh let, let's talk about it let um season one kaiju max for once again for anyone who's new to this each um each season of kaiju max is a uh, six issues which is which is pretty cool um you explain about that like in the back of one of your little q and a's i remember um i also went back and like skimmed a lot of the q and a's i didn't read all of them yeah because um a, a lot of it is like I felt like stuff I already figured out or knew. Yeah, right? and it repeats itself a lot because I was kind of oh, kind of yeah. forget what <laughs> I've written and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, but I'll, I'll I'll tell you this season season one is a really good like opening. Like I feel like it really does set up a lot of things that we follow through even to like the very end. You know. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, and um, and and it's really promising. Um, one thing I did notice, and you probably already know this, that in the first issue going from page to four from page four to five the the brush width of your like um of your like brush like gets thicker oh, i noticed because because you, you were using like skinnier like like the line uh width was like skinnier and then in the next page they, they suddenly become way thicker um yeah you're do, right can, can you explain I've... that oh. <laughs> what, why, um, why why you do that <laughs> i don't I don't know. I mean, I mean, this is all done digitally. So, I mean, it would really just be a matter of like a slider bar somewhere. Um, Because um, once, once it gets, once it gets thicker, you just kind of just stick with that. Yeah. Until like the end, I think. I mean, I had, I had done some digital artwork before this, but probably, I mean, you know, if you wanted to add it all up, it was probably 10, 15 pages of, Mm -hmm. you know, the equivalent of, of, uh, all digital artwork. And so I was learned, I mean, I was learning on the job for sure. And then, 
and I think that I was, you know, I, I remember I really specifically was looking at James Stokoe uh, and his stuff on like the, the half century war and like um, mm -hmm. his other Godzilla stuff and d the aliens series he did. Um, and I mean, he's, he's a master. Right. And so I was, mm -hmm. I was kind of trying to draw from that, draw, like pull from that, like the, to have a, uh, um, a detailed, uh, you know, sort of line art. But then I sort of felt like that was not naturally me. And so I was trying to do something that was going to, I was trying, I mean, I was trying to thicken up the, um, the outlines so that, you know, so that things got distinguished from the background a little bit more completely. Uh, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, that I, th I'm sure that I was just, just kind of playing, like I didn't sort of consider anything to be, um, sacred. I was just sort of like playing with the with the knobs you know so to speak and, and get getting to that point i mean because you'll notice too like the lettering really makes a, a huge goes on a huge journey <laughs> oh, yeah, you know I, like I, the lettering I, in I the agree. first one is, and the lettering in the last one i think are, are miles apart and so i was all the way throughout i was um i was really playing with stuff i mean i, I think probably the biggest change came and it's probably in the f f fifth issue um where uh let's see yeah i think the fifth issue on the title page is where i started l inking in um uh clip studio instead of photoshop oh, okay. and so i was doing lettering and uh and inking in the in clip studio uh, it was i mean it was manga studio at the time and uh and i think it doesn't change everything but boy i mean it allowed me to really uh to really improve digital yeah, you know, I, sort of my digital art and get yeah. a lot cleaner. Yeah, I, I see it. It's um it seemed like the lines are a little bit more how to say I, I don't know if the word smoother is appropriate, but there's kind of more like they, they look different. Like the yeah. something about the kaijus, they look a little bit more chunkier. Yeah, and at I the think the beginning. It, and it was it's eight more able to sort of take us make a smooth line um, than Photoshop. Photoshop is just I mean, Photoshop is a great program, I guess, but like it's a, but it also like, it interprets, you know, uh, pressure, you know, pen pressure and stuff like that yeah, yeah. a little bit differently. So I, I got you. I, I recently like divorced my Photoshop. I just couldn't, it, it was like crashing too often for me to like get any work done. Now yeah. I'm on Clip Studio Paint like you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's way better. But, um, let me let me let me see from my notes. So yeah, I already told you it's very promising. Yeah. I do think we we get a little bit of um. It, it also kind of has its own little like self-contained story within it, you know. So it's not like um, it, it's not like oh all the cool things like any any sort of like um conclusion or emotional like kind of climax isn't saved for a later season. Like you do achieve that in this season, you yeah. know. I, right. I, I was trying to like that's what I was saying before like I really I never wanted to just sort of like push things off you know if there's if there's going to be you know if there's going to be something that I'm pushing for in the future I'm still going to try to make the what's happening now have a beginning middle and end you know what I mean mm -hmm. like um like I was the stuff that happens with Daniel the goat guy uh, right. in the third season I originally was going to have in the first season and it's it's crazy for me to think that because it's like oh, I don't yeah. know, where would it <laughs> where, have fit you know yeah was, yeah exactly <laughs> there was, I was I was real ambitious with the first season initially but I luckily I was kind of going about it in a way that was that I was being a little bit more uh I was I was sort of improvising on the page a little bit more and so I was yeah. I, I would sort of go like oh yeah this is what this issue is about and no way can we fit this other stuff in there so, but I mean, I wanted to sort of give him a little bit of an arc, even though he, it, it's not a very consequential thing that happens to him in that season. But like, I just wanted to give him a little bit of an arc, uh, even though I wasn't going to get to like the meaty stuff until later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, um, yeah, exactly. You gave us, you gave us like enough, like of a through line that like, when his stuff sort of concludes later on, um, it's not like unearned, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every, everybody has their moment, and every, and not everybody has to be the star of every, you know, yeah. every uh, story. Oh, by the way, I did, um, while we reading it, I did actually try to look for, um, what was his name, Grubzo? 
<laughs> oh my god I yeah hope, i don't know that i remember to put him in every issue <laughs> you um you i think you have i'm not i'm not sure because sometimes like if i couldn't find it i would just move on <laughs> right right but uh yeah if for the people in the in the audience grub grubzo is like a little little red like chicken looking kaiju he, and he's like tiny because um in kaiju max they also have a couple of like little more tinier kaijus running around and um, he's he's supposedly in every issue. Supposedly, I think he's even in issues where you say he's not gonna be there. Because I swear I spotted him in like the ones like in the in the prison escape one. He's like, he's escaped, right? But um, you can still spot him like once in a while running around, and I really, I really appreciate that. It's it's fun, you know. Yeah, I, I, and I did think it was funny too to add something that's basically like you know the activity corner of a kid's book to a oh, yeah. comic that's so bleak and so gruesome. <laughs> oh yeah, and I and I also um, I guess spoilers ahead. I love it where like wh- how um, I get I guess I love like his little his his little slightly bigger role in the finale. I, I think that was really great. I think that was very like oh yeah finally like <laughs> yeah. some something for the grubzo heads right. um, fi- to like yeah. chew on you know all three of you right yeah right. i mean <laughs> no i that and that was something that i always thought i mean it was always fun that this that the the premise of this comic allowed for a lot of like big swings on on weird stuff like that you could kind of just say like oh i'm gonna give a backstory that's completely wild and it was gonna fit in because the comic was already you know kind of unhinged in that way it, like. it, it's pretty it's pretty like a it's a very interesting roller coaster ride you're like weaving you know because it's like you, you have um you, you have the satire right but you also have these kind of like these these vinyl toy looking creatures running around you know <laughs> um like experience the equivalent of what would be like sexual assault but like the kaiju version right i know yeah i mean it, it's it's a it's a it's a lot of things you're throwing at us I'm, I'm not complaining though i mean i like it i i i forgot like on the reread i forgot like oh i forgot how like like serious this comic gets or how yeah. like dramatic like it, it how much like dramatic stuff it throws at you you know yeah and i think i mean i and i i feel a couple ways about it you know uh rereading it i don't i don't i don't think i've reread the whole thing but like rereading it in parts i'm like oh yeah i've sort of got <laughs> i got serious for a minute there like i don't know if that's i i don't always like sometimes it was just sort of my the way i was feeling at the moment you know yeah. and, and i don't know if it's the best tactical move you know I, but um i i feel that when like in retrospect you're like oh should i have done that was that like necessary for me to do kind of kind of ment- mentality you know do, yeah you get what i mean yeah and i mean i and i think you know and i mean i'll stand by it all and i think it's all pretty much on message you know and i think mm-hmm. it's all pretty much like delivers on the the promise of what you know what you kind of figure figure it's going to be like when you read the first issue so i mean I, so i you know i'm never going to sort of say like oh i disavow this part of it but i but i also just sort of feel like there's a lot of stuff that's like, oh, I'd do it differently. You know, even by the sixth issue or by the, you know, fourth or fifth issue, I was like, oh, I'd do stuff in the early seasons yeah, differently. Yeah. I, pl- I would have played that, that, that more, that less, you know, whatever. No, no, I got you. I think, um, no, I, I think what you, what you did is like, it's like valid, you know, and I think it does, um, it, it, it's kind of like interesting when you like have a change of mind later. Um, I think it gives like people more stuff to talk about on the reread, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Personally, I'm not like super bothered by it, but you know, yeah. each their own. Um, but okay, so I kind of want to like wrap up this segment with season one and, and okay. mention. Okay, so I want to say what my favorite issue was, <laughs> and what which are my like favorite kaiju of like season one so okay. far. Okay, and I'm gonna try to do this for every season <laughs> as we go through it. But my favorite issue is um, issue three with um oh, okay how, yeah. with the, with the sure, mostly the, the stuff the with um, mechazon on. i really mechazon. like yeah mm-hmm. mechazon but also the introduction of the little imaginary boy i thought that was great <laughs> and uh and i want to mention this now before like i forget but i i like that later like you you bring back imaginary children again <laughs> <laughs> like i think it's a uh, season five yeah you bring back imaginary children for like a couple of panels and i'm like damn this guy really like <laughs> i mean 
it, it i mean it's funny it works right and like for anyone who um who doesn't know i was talking to my partner um a cut while rereading i was talking to my partner and i was explaining to them like oh i love the bit with um with uh was what's the name hoffy woofy Wolfie, yeah, Wolfie, yeah. yeah, Wolfie, and like his little imaginary like boy child friend, because <laughs> how it's like it's 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 really it's really like cool where where that kind of like uh, direction goes. It's very interesting, but also I like how it's like um, if if you know like if you've seen Godzilla's Revenge, this is like this is like a parody of that, you know, <laughs> or like it, it's like a parody slash like almost like a horror reimagining of it right 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 and i and while reading that like i remember like when i first encountered that i thought whoa this is like this is like cosmic brain level idea right here you know (laughs) like i really thought you were really um you were really kind of like pushing the concept really well uh well i can a lot yeah i think that that might have been the moment too like when people kind of realized that this isn't just sort of like like, I think that early on, I think you'd kind of be like, oh, yeah, the, the tropes of monster movies, the monster movies we've all seen, you know, like there's three or four that we've all seen. But like, I think that with that, people could know that like, oh, this is getting into sort of the weeds you know, or at least sort right. of like the, into some pretty granular stuff for for monster movies. Like right. this is made by a super fan because it's like if you haven't seen that one specific movie that is on everybody's like worst 10 list, <laughs> right. then then it doesn't make any sense to you, you know, because it's like, oh, he dreams his way there. What does that even mean? Why am I supposed to accept that? And it's like, well, <laughs> you know, it's a it's a gag, you know, only if you've seen that movie and, uh, you know. And so I think that that was maybe the and who knows, but I think that, that was maybe the moment when people were I, realized that like, oh, this is like inside baseball kaiju stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I I yeah, I really fucking like. Oh, by the way, I did um, I did read a couple of the reviews that you would put at the end too, <laughs> for um. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the issues, mostly the ones for stuff I I've watched. I didn't read the reviews for the stuff I didn't watch because I don't want to be like. I know these movies were made in the fucking like. 70s but i still don't want to like i would like to go into i haven't seen the mysterion so i'm like i i still want to go into the mysterions without really yeah. knowing what happens right yeah. <laughs> um not not yeah. gonna lie though i you, you do a good job of like throwing in the stuff that more of the hardcore like kaiju fan would know but there are right. some moments where it feels like you, you're just kind of just like making a reference for a sake of a reference almost oh do sure. you, you think that do you think that's a fair thing to say oh yeah oh yeah right I mean, you know like they can't all be winners <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, exactly. Right. Like, um, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, I tried to have it, them all have at least a purpose. Like one, I'm replacing a swear word, you know, right, like, yeah. uh, like that's or, or, you know, whether whether to be f- just to be funny or just to not say a swear word, because I was trying to keep it. Strangely enough, I was trying to keep it PG in terms of language. Um, oh, yeah. But but also like oh, well, a giant monster wouldn't have a word for, like, they wouldn't use the same words that we would because that doesn't make any sense, you know, like, it doesn't make any logical sense. I I did catch you, like, slip one time, though. (laughs) I remember, I I can't remember in which season it was, but one one guy just straight up says, oh, my God, and I'm like, wait a second. That should be oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it might it might be, but I I might have had a reason for it. I don't know. Like there there's sometimes okay. it's like oh they're they're like super immersed in the human world or whatever. I don't know. It, <laughs> no, but it, no, it's just no, as likely reader. to be a mistake. No, dear reader, it, I didn't make a mistake. Right, Clearly, right, right. it was all planned. <laughs> right, right, right. Somebody wanted to claim that no prize. You go right ahead. Uh, <laughs> all right, but that's um yeah, that's awesome. And I think um I really like the whole um perspective angle you got with Megazon who's like constantly like sees the world through like a like a constant wanna kill stream, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was such like an like an awesome idea. And it's very like interesting, like, wow, did you just like put a psychological breakdown to Mecha Godzilla? Like <laughs> like that's <laughs> another thing that's very like, oh, you took something from the movies and you like reinterpret it, you know, like, oh, what would it have been like to like be Mecha Godzilla and then you become a pacifist? That's so that's so crazy to yeah. me, you know. Well, and and every you it's, know, it's, it's really like cool, and I really like, like where like that goes. Yeah, and it's like every little idea, you know, it's like you kind of think like, well, I'll start with the monster movie thing and then I'll tie it to like a prison or crime thing. Right. Or I'll take a prison crime thing and like tie it to a, a Godzilla, you know, kind of paint it with Godzilla stuff. And, uh, you know, it's it's interesting where, where you kind of, you know, you, 
the way that you have to kind of you have to approach every sort of like little thing in there from a different perspective like yeah i mean it's like his his sort of hud or whatever like is all you know in a way like um you know like ptsd or sort of like always being on edge or always being you know ready to fight um and and like him trying to sort of get away from that and try to you know and how hard it is to live like a peaceful life when you everything in your field of vision is telling you murder this guy or whatever like targeting things and uh and i i thought that that was um i mean again it's like that it, that was a fun a sort of a fun way to do it the um i think i might have come up with that like when that that cover uh is um <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good cover too. It might yeah. be one of my favorites of season one. I think it's one of my favorites too. One of the funny things about it is one, it, it's in six hundred DPI. Like I accidentally didn't change it before I inked it, so it's so the lines are like super thick and chunky, and mm-hmm. and two, uh, I did that whole cover in like five hours because <laughs> because uh, I got oh, a call yeah. from the I got a call from the editor and he's like, oh that's that uh, that covers due like by the end of the day. <laughs> I'm like god oh, damn it so well, so i just and so i kind of created all the ideas of that issue because i mean these covers are four months out from when like the comic is sold so i hadn't even started on the issue and so i and so i kind of came up with all the basic ideas that day figuring out how to draw that and you know oh figuring out what his sort of like vision was going to look like even though it wasn't really from his point of view view is like how he sees the world with the grids on the ground and like everything has a sort of a pop-up you know label or whatever no um, that's awesome and also a pretty clever way to like uh kind of like try to make a cover as fast as possible because what it's like you, you just use like maybe five different colors on this yeah on this, and, on this and, cover and that was i mean that was part of saving time and it ended up being sort of like a, a sort of a visual motif for the issue which is which is nice that <laughs> it's nice when that works out, you know. Okay, uh, and speaking about this cover, it goes into my next little thing I want to talk about. Season one, I want to talk about um, my two favorite kaiju's of season one. Oh yeah, and um, my I, I think I mentioned this one before on a, on our previous recording, but I really love the 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 like mandrill face like furry crab monster creature oh, yeah. Yeah. that's like a member of the like cryptids because. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember asking you about that, and you said you had really no idea where that came from. And it was, I, yeah, no, he talk- was in my sketchbook, and and actually, he's sort of like a strange outlier in terms of like the monsters in there, because usually the monsters are kind of, I mean, they wouldn't say they're one to one, but they're kind of like, okay, this is very clearly based on this specific. Oh yeah, here's and, yeah. here's here's like here's your Rodan, here's your Baragon, yeah, here's like your. You know, and, another Baragon. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, they're all right. kind of design, like dis- visually designed based on this. And then I just go, you know, I go kind of off the map on their personalities. Like I just change mm-hmm. their personalities up. But this one, I kind of just drew him because he looked cool. And uh, and then I was just like, well, <laughs> you know, he's kind of like Sasquatch, I guess. But like, I don't know where the crab claws came from. They just look neat. <laughs> and, uh, I- you know, so he kind of didn't fit in that way. He, he um, gives me this very like B movie monster, like uh, like an American B movie kind of alien creature. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, and it's it's kind of like oh, we designed him by like looking in the prop closet to see what we had lying around. Right, know? exactly. <laughs> it, it's that mentality of like it, it's I could totally see it as like oh, we got to make a we got to make a sci fi movie. Those are popular right now. It's the fifties. Um, what do we got in the prop closet? <laughs> right. Well, we got like half a gorilla suit. And some yeah. crab claws. <laughs> yeah, right? like, hey, say no more. Like, you know, right. we got Boom. a stuntman who's ready to go. <laughs> there's your alien, right? <laughs> exactly. And yeah, that's like so spot on to like what actually happened back then. Um, <laughs> and and he's, he's on this cover for um, issue three. And also my second, my other favorite kaiju. I want to say he's my second favorite, but he's just one of my favorites. Is um, oh, His name is uh, Tarragon. I mean, Tarago. Yeah, Tarango. Right? Tarango, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um yeah i like um I, I i just like his personality i think he's really funny and also i like how simple he is i'm a i i, I guess i'm a sucker for more simpler looking kaijus yeah i right? i agree with that i he actually it's funny he is my favorite character and for a couple tell. for a couple <laughs> reasons well one i like i like the simple designs and i like and and it's and the reason he's designed so simply is because his first 
the first time I draw, I mean, almost all these characters, the first time I draw them is when they're on the page. <laughs> you know, like I don't, right, yeah, I almost I never do a character design sheet. Uh, uh, I, I can't I mean, even think of one example. Why, why would you? I'm pretty, there's like kaijus in issue one that don't ever come back. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, and a lot of times it was because they're too detailed. Like, and I, right. I didn't, I just didn't like their design. But anyway, I like, I like his design because, well, one, it's just like he's such a dumb looking, like, uh, you know, he's goofy. pterodactyl, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, and then uh, and I just had him. I just wanted. I just was putting in a background character who's sort of a hype man for the for the rapper. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, um, but but what I really liked is that he basically never really evolved a like a a deep sad backstory. Like there's a little bit of oh, a backstory, yeah. but I just liked that he was sort of like just hustling just like just hustling trying to is oh there's a way to score some drugs let me score some drugs like that's great and he just was the super most useful character to have as a like um like let's just put a button on the end of the scene like oh somebody's got to say something that's funny great like let's have him do it and so i he was he was so useful in that way that i really i just really liked him as a character and uh you know and then it's like and i really kind of even though i i sort of you know, had him resurrected. I was really sad to kill him off in the in the oh, yeah, last I season. <laughs> I was yeah, like, I was oh, I was I don't upset know if this too. Is a I was like, move. oh man, <laughs> yeah, like oh man, he's gone. This is real. <laughs> yeah, this is real. All of a sudden, like the, the the happy character, the character who basically has no darkness in him, is dead. Oh no, what what does that mean? Yeah, yeah that's another thing that makes him really like likable. Is the majority of everyone in this like in the series are assholes, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, one way or another, like they they. You know, they're making sort of like the cruelest decisions, you know. Right, exactly. While while he's over here, like I just he's like he just wants to like hang out, he just wants to get high, he just he's he's he wants he's like friendly, you know. Yeah. Right? And and that's kinda like he, he's like truly like friendly. He's not trying to like um take advantage of people right? yeah the, there's other characters who are friendly but they're ter- trying to take advantage of other characters and, like and, the one guy who's not doing that yeah and i i really i always really like characters who are sort of like not not enlightened you know like at all but like but kind-hearted to the to the core so like like uh, he's there's a there's a thing where it's like he he sort of they were kind of talking around the idea that um that the character of sharkmon in the, like the fifth season or whatever uh talking around the idea that he's gay and basically he's just been like you know he's like i see what you're talking about but don't be checking out my you know and then he has some like word for like the the ass end of a of a pteranodon yeah. <laughs> you know like right. and uh and i just and it's like yeah i mean like he's not he's definitely not sort of someone who is like a deep thinker but like is sort of but it's like yeah i'm cool with everybody like you know oh that's what that's what you're into great that's cool man you know like <laughs> and i kind of it, and it's like yeah you I mean you it's not like a hero but it's like yeah i mean i, I like that guy yeah <laughs> cool. uh, yeah he does he yeah he doesn't need to be a hero it's yeah. but right he just he just needs to be a good guy that's it yeah and i think um i think with that like we wrap up with um with season that's all yeah. i gotta really say yeah, about yeah, yeah. Uh, season one it was it was a really good start really pulled me in um but now let's uh let's go into season two and i want to just start off by saying um li- a little bit of a spoiler for my ranking eventually down the line but season two is my favorite season of the okay. whole series okay Right. And um, what, what, what do you think of that? What do you, what do you think about that? Opinion? I, you know, I, well, I, I have issues with season two in terms of the drawing, <laughs> you know, oh, just because it, no, it's fine. It's fine. But it's like, oh, I think the drawing got better after two. But like, yeah, I think that the story is probably there's this there's probably as little dead space in this issue or in this season as there is anywhere. Like I, I, le- I think it's it, it's constantly moving. I liked all the little you know sort of side roads of story that it that it went down and i really like the ending so like yeah i mean i think that it i I think it holds up pretty well uh in terms of my estimation yeah it definitely does and i think that's um something i really appreciate from from stories and like this isn't a requirement for every story i can like many different kinds of stories but i think um the biggest kind of story i gravitate to are the ones where there's kind of like a running clock or like almost like suspense or the characters are just constantly moving, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and you, you don't really get that with season one. Not that that's a bad thing because it just takes place in the prison. 
right? We, yeah. We're just in one location for the and majority of it. you can get tired of that stuff on the long, in the long haul, too. I mean, it, it's, it's great that, like, season one is just like that. And in season two, we get to see a little bit more of the outside world. Right, we get to we get to understand the world a little bit more beyond like Kaiju Max, but also there's the whole like, oh, we're running away from the cops, right? Yeah, they yeah. just did this big prison escape, and now they're on the run, and I th- I think that's very exciting, right? Cause- well, and I, and I think that that's fun too to be able to sort of say like, okay, this is now the this part of the story, like this this isn't a continuation of the same story. This is a new story set in the same world, and so we can a- approach it from a different viewpoint we can have these cops and sort of approach things from sort of a police procedural uh you know and and i wanted to continue the story of this uh, of the character of, of jong with his armor and all that stuff oh yeah that's ooh, that's so that's really good i really love where like that goes and like mm-hmm. how far you could like you could like take like that that angle you know mm-hmm. Yeah, he's and, he's a big favorite of mine uh, as a character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it it, it, it seems to be because um it, it was really like you really see the beginning. I mean, you not that you just see the beginning. It's like a, a major part in the in season one where you see him like start going down this road uh-huh. of um of just constantly being scared and and I and it's another thing where it's like you take something that like exists in like tokusatsu like in kaiju medium and you like just kind of like rethink it you kind of like put it on your head like what what if someone was like what if someone's job that was all about constantly being around kaiju was so scared of being squash due to like <laughs> a, a moment that happened in their life and that's like horrifying you know yeah that that feels like oh yeah cool you're, you're tackling like the ptsd that these humans would get in this world if they have to be so close to kaiju right that they had no choice right and i you know you know and i also wanted to sort of i mean i think even before sort of you know 2020 or whatever i, I, right. I had a pretty cynical look on cops uh and i wanted to sort of say like okay well somebody who's in that space like who's trying to be a good person but can't just basically can't be like it, it's it's oh, kind that, of there's a lot of that it's kind of <laughs> and, impossible and so and or at least being in that space and trying to be a good person what kind of you know kind of um, toll that takes on him you know i yeah. think that, that was but that was kind of a that was kind of a fun thing to to explore and it was fun to sort of have this thing that like in tokusatsu media when like somebody has like sweet humongous armor and like guns and knives and you know wings and stuff all over his back it's like that's just rad right but then yeah. it's like making it decidedly unrad but right. that like it's just showing how how his mind is deteriorating and, it, and yeah 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 I, I, oh i love that angle right because like it's <laughs> in, in a lot of that media like when they get all that sweet armor it's like some sort of character growth or some sort of upgrade, you know, but, but you kind of like flip that on your head. Like, okay, why do they have all this armor? Because they have PTSD, you know, right, like right. kind of, <laughs> um, very kind of like, um, soldier who veteran who stockpiles on weapons. Cause they're incredibly scared. kind of yeah. thing, you know? And yeah. That, and I mean, that's a really, it's very like, I, I was about to say fun angle. I don't think it's fun, but it's very interesting. It's very like, yeah, really a lot of, uh, a lot of meat to that bone, I guess. Yeah, and I think it's and it's I mean it's fun. fun I mean again I'm saying fun too because it, it's it, it's it's nice to be able to sort of a, approach things like that with a little bit of absurdity so that you can so that you can kind of get at certain things without it being so awful. You know, <laughs> like right, you know right. you want to tell a story who, of somebody who's really deteriorating because of their PTSD. It's like you're not having fun with that at all. But if you can kind of say, well, it's not it's not PTSD quote unquote. It's, you know, it's just this giant armor that's growing on him and he does, and maybe he goes to a therapist, but they're kind of really, you know, they, they're limited what they're talking about to like, well, this armor is growing all over me. And I think that you can kind of then get to, I mean, just like all science fiction or whatever, you can get to some, some things that might be tough to uh, approach if you're telling a true to life story. Right. Right. Exactly. And I, I, I think it works. You, you probably already said this, but I think it, it works as a very nice visual representation, you know, <laughs> yeah. like in, in, a, in a world where like these giant creatures represent the folly of man, you, you, you have you have to have like everything else kind of like should represent something, you know, usually yeah. not always, but like, you know, it, it's it makes it more it, it gives it makes the story more 
it makes it more deep, I guess. You yeah. know, it, it makes you more invested in everything. Right. Well, and, and I uh, like to, and I like too when things, you know, when like new visual stuff does not always equal cool new upgrade. <laughs> It right, just, exactly. It, it equals not, a story. Not in the line. world of Kaiju Max. Yeah. Not in Kaiju Max. This ain't your daddy's kaijus. <laughs> um, I, to be honest, I like season two so much. I re- it's really hard for me to pick a favorite issue, you know? Because mm-hmm. just that's how much I like season two. And um, I think if I were to pick an issue that stands out, maybe it's the one where um, uh, Electrogor, like goes underwater until and he meets like the more like cthulhu monsters yeah, yeah. right which yeah. i thought was really cool like oh wow this is like this is really great because you're not limiting yourself to like just um just kaiju media you're just anything that's big right right is, right. is a thing and it, it's crazy how as the series goes on you, you there's really no limits to like how big you'll go when um let me let me just skip a little forward to i think a uh, season five when um when the giant turtles that hold hold up the world, one of them is is like called into jury summons. I thought that was really funny. As yeah. like, okay, you really have no limit to as long as it's big, it exists in this world. You know? Well, and that was kind of that was fun too. That well, we'll get to it. But like, I like the idea that everybody can be the same size for once in this sort of like construct of the of this like astral plane. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought know. that was really cool. Right. That I could well, bring in things that were absolutely immense and thing and people that were you know regular sized people and Pokemon type characters and stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, it's funny. I actually oh, yeah, there's definitely. a couple. I like that issue the the with the Cthulhu monsters. I mean, it was like God. I, I remember reading a ton of Lovecraft just to prepare for this, and I'm like, God, I hate I hate Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't really mean it, but it was it's it's not really a lot of the I, stuff is not all that fun to read, you know. And so I, 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 I agree. I like hot take. <laughs> I, I don't have too much fun like reading. Yeah. Love I mean, some, every once I, in a while he'll have a good turn of phrase, but, you, but I, it's also I, like, I, you know, it's like, oh, and then the next sentence is something super racist. And so you're like, eh, this isn't, this isn't I, all that fun. <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, no offense to all, to all my friends who like Lovecraft. I'm not really big into it. Um, I think, um, I think everything I would want to get from Lovecraft, I get out of like stuff like Junji Ito, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, en- enough about enough about other comics. Um, uh, I, t- I really did actually like this. And the, the issue that I like the best probably is the is the Zugaigo, uh, you know, the the, mo- the the turtle monster and all and all the kids that like are his oh, yeah, biggest that was... defenders. <laughs> yes, how... that was great. That was sort of the first issue that I had like a, a, a twist ending where it's like because because it, we spent the whole issue kind of expecting that the the kang the, the warden is the is the boy who is like defending zugaigo and kind right. of and i mean it's been done in a million things but like but like that that like matsumoto keeps saying oh what made you so soft or what made you so and then you know and then sort of like oh it was this sh- story that made her so hard and an un sort of unrelenting and i thought that that mm-hmm. was kind of it was fun and it was also really fun to kind of do a like a straight pastiche of a Gamera movie. Like it's like this, those flashback sequences are just kind of like funny versions of a Gamera movie instead of being, you know, instead of being what they usually are where it's like, Oh, it's a crime story, but with these, but with this visual motif, it's like, I could just kind of tell Gamera jokes for, oh, yeah. for, for, you know, half the issue. I thought that was, that was a fun one to do. You know what? That That is a good issue. Okay. <laughs> you know what? That is what, Okay, you know what? I agree. Your comic's good. I think, <laughs> okay. I think you made a good comic. Fin- here. <laughs> finally, finally, I made a good comic. Fine. <laughs> yeah, the 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 only other one that's like I I really like the final issue. I think is, I mean, it's just it's a I think it's a fine conclusion and all that I, stuff. I, and I and I liked the I liked the eat this you know like tough guy line. But, oh yeah, um, that was awesome. But my favorite part was the was I I was kind of like, okay, there's gonna be a fight and it's gonna be. Like this isn't really a fight comic, and so yeah. I didn't want it to just be like pow smash, and so, all right, you know, I was like, well, if it is going to be pow smash, I'm going to have there be like a, a flashback that sort of gives it something else, uh-huh. and and so I had no, I had never really thought about this character of Jong and where he came from, but I was like, well, he's Korean. I didn't say which Korea, so let's uh, 
<laughs> let's give oh, it, yeah, you know, I, let's make him be from, from North Korea. And God, that's, that's one of those things that like on the reread, I totally forgot you put in there. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You put that in there. I remember and, now. and the, I mean, the thing that I'm so pleased about is that like early on, maybe in the first couple issues, Charlie Chu, who was the editor on the book was like, He's like, here's what I here's the monster that I want you to put in there. I want you to put in Pulgasari, which is a North Korean. Uh, oh, uh, oh, I'm very familiar with yeah. Pulgasari. Yeah, Pulgasari, North American monster movie, but with Kim Jong Il's head. And I'm like, all right, yeah, maybe. So I <laughs> wrote that down and put it in, mm-hmm. you know, put it on a notebook or whatever. And then I was like, oh, perfect. A time to put in <laughs> Pulgasari <laughs> with Kim Jong Il's head and have it mean something instead of him just being like, oh, a background character. And so I was really pleased about like how. You know, a it solved a couple of problems. A, I got to fulfill that request. B, I I got to turn a pretty boring, you know, or a pretty sort of like off-brand fight scene into something that sort of fit Some a little in, bit more. Yeah, fit in with the with the ethos of the comic, you know, and um and then uh and two, it you know, it just was funny. <laughs> like I just oh, love yeah, that definitely. that page turn where it's like the screeching face of Kim Jong Il, and of course it's like you you know you can you can crap on Kim Jong-il all you want. No one's going to yeah, complain. Yeah, that's fine. You know, <laughs> he's yeah, not yeah. exactly the most popular guy in the world. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much as being like maybe the, the 10th or 11th fan of the movie Pulgasari. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, when I got to that, I was like with, with my own like interpretation of what Pulgasari is about, you know, and for anyone who, who hasn't seen Pulgasari, it's a very interesting movie. Um, like Xander said, it's a North, it's like the one and only North Korean kaiju movie. And, um, the director was kidnapped to make it. And so a lot of people interpret the movie as like, it's more like shitting on North Korea kind of, <laughs> yeah. but I, I think there's like a lot more stuff going on than that. Um, when I got to that, when I got to that part of the comic, my, like my, my take of Pulgasari like was in my head and I was thinking like maybe a Joseph Stalin head would have been better. <laughs> I mean, because cause that's just my, that's what I was thinking would be my take on like uh, what Pogosari would, would be about, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but it's, but it's great. I like, um yeah, yeah. I'm, I wasn't joking when I said I'm one of the few um handful of like Pogosari fans out there. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, it's far, from, I mean, I, when I saw it, I was like, I was like, oh boy, this is going to be terrible. And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty decent. Like, uh-huh. I mean, they really got their money's worth out of that giant foot that they built. <laughs> oh, know, definitely. Like they, it just keeps squishing people. It's so great. I, um, I, I think by 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 telling your by telling yourself that, like, I mean, cause it's actually part of the real story where it's like, oh, the director got kidnapped to make this kind of like makes it a little bit more OK to like the movie, you know, because it's right, like, right. oh, OK, well, it's not like this guy had all the beliefs that like a King John would have. Right. He was, right. It was more at gunpoint, but it's but it seemed like what what he was trying to say could still like resurface to to the top and could like get under the radar, you know. Yeah, so I mean, and it's it's essentially sort of like a, the the story of a worker uprising, and it's like yeah, you know, exactly. It's kind of like relate. oh, it, yeah. And so you can kind of you can apply that to a lot of stuff. I mean, I think that Kim Jong Il was sort of like yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the Workers Party of uh, North Korea, which is what we're part of. And it's like yeah, kind of, but it's also right, right like- exactly. It's, it's how you get like so many. It's how you get like like terrible people like identifying with like the rebels in Star Wars and whatnot. Like oh yeah, we're the rebels, right? Yeah, we're the rebels, right? Yeah, it's it's awesome. But um, anyway, I let me let me tell you about my two two favorite kaiju that were introduced in uh season two i really like goat i think um oh yeah i think her design is so like i like how different it is i like that she isn't like um i i don't think she's the most straightforward like one for one um like the design from um what well, the character she's based on in the cthulhu mythos right yeah shub right. yeah shub right um and and but I like how just unique she is, like her being like a like a goat skull head and like her body just made out of tentacles. Yeah, and yeah. I mean that's like really fucking cool. And I and I love that you bring her back. When you brought her back, I was like super excited. Yeah, right? I it's and it's like it's, that was one of those characters that I just like straight up redesigned where it's just like Oh, oh yeah, I, oh, yeah like, I could I I could tell. <laughs> I mean it's like well one, it's like I, I was drawing the original one with with no reference for the goat skull and every and every time she showed up after that i was like okay i got it i'm really mm-hmm. like gonna call up that picture of the goat skull so that i can <laughs> draw it correctly you know so that it looked right every time and uh 
yeah and, and also the tentacles changed you know and i just i just didn't i mean yeah i just didn't think that it was a fully fleshed out idea first time around i mean it works fine but it was but i when i brought her back i was like oh, i gotta i gotta make her look cor- correct and of course i made her really a pain in the neck to draw because <laughs> there's so many tentacles and they all had to be sort of like overlapping each other like spaghetti and like they all had yeah. like this sort of like scratches and wrinkles and stuff on them and i'm like it, I mean, I I shot myself in the foot on so many of these characters, you know, like oh, definitely. Some were so easy to draw, and some were like, oh boy, this, you know, <laughs> no, this no, is a I, pain. I I get that feeling when you like just do a character really quickly without thinking that like, wow, I have to draw this character like ten more times. Right, right, right. And it's funny too because some characters have a lot of detail, and they just they take a while, but they're not hard. Uh, and then some characters are like, you know, where they'll have like a whole bunch of stripes on them and they all have, right. they have to be a certain color. And it's like, oh, boy, that is so hard to keep track of. And especially like, uh, you know, Jason Fisher was the color assistant on this on the series. And it's like, uh, Jason, you know, then Jason's screwed because I put the wrong number of stripes on there. And then he's kind of he's got to like figure out how to put all three colors in there in the two stripes or whatever I did wrong. And yeah, that was that's that was a funny thing that would happen every once in a while it's just like oh god i need to stop oh. making things with like rainbow stripes on them and stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny because you, you kept doing that anyway <laughs> oh yeah yeah no i it, it the writer me and the artist me have some yeah they've got some, they've got some scores Issues. to settle yeah. <laughs> okay and my other favorite kaiju is um the black humongo i really like that design because yeah, it I, really it, it's really like oh it's straight up like a monochrome like kaiju every other kaiju has seemed kind of like th- they seemed a little bit more i guess like quote unquote like realistic kind of like kaiju scaling mm-hmm. like like lizard beast creature designs like they right and and then when the black humongo like shows up it's very like oh wow this is um this is very interesting because it looks it looks way different than all the other kaijus and I don't think any other kaiju after that comes really close to like looking that weird to me or looking like it stands out to me, you know. Well, and he's I th- he has a very sort of threatening aura to him. Just oh, yeah. the the fact that it's sort of a photo a, like a photo negative, but then also like the black uh like word balloons of the white lettering. I think that that it has a sort of a menace to it, which right. I think, you know, I think that can cut both ways too like in the, you know, in the sort of the story where it's like about police about policing but then also um yeah in a way he doesn't fit into the world of kaiju max where all these monsters are pretty silly looking you know <laughs> like in a way he's like it's like he's it's almost like a, a, a like a refugee from a more serious comic about kaiju you know right. what i mean <laughs> no no i no i get you i mean i think it really helps makes um that issue way more memorable mm-hmm. you know because like oh there's a very unique looking kaiju that only shows up in this issue yeah right and like right. um i'm surprised you didn't put that guy on the cover to be honest but i mean i uh, like the cover for that from oh, from issue two. oh yeah 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 it's well, the, the one where the, the red humongo is like walking home from work yeah that that was originally going to be the cover of the first issue oh, okay. um but the editor said oh it's that doesn't um I don't think that's doesn't have like the main characters on it. And I was like, well, you know, all right, good point. So I said, all right, I did a new cover for the for the first issue. And then I had that be the cover for the second issue. So that was why. So I hadn't even thought about that character yet. So that I mean, that's why he wasn't on the on the cover, because yeah, I hadn't even thought of him yet. (laughs) I think um, I I think issue one is looks way a little bit more exciting than. um, Yeah than issue two. Yeah, I mean, I like a little bit more somber. (laughs) Yeah, I like the. I mean, I think that the second issue yeah cover is is a yeah it's i mean i think it's on brand for the comic it's very sort of, oh, like, no, of course grim and you know and satirical but, but i guess i guess what i'm saying is when you start the new season you kind of want to like you know i i think you gotta kind of pump people up a little bit you know like oh wow here's a kaiju getting like handcuffed yeah right and i that's think a, when you're working a a, more when you're working on a series like that you can kind of get kind of not see the forest for the trees a little bit where you're like oh yeah you know this is this is the story I want to tell. And it's like, yeah, that is the story you want to tell, but you also want to, you know, kind of signal to people like, Hey, here, here you go. Here are the main characters. Here's the, here's the central conflict that they're going to be involved in instead of just kind of like, here's your sort of visual gag with your, you know, your, your grim visual gag with your side character, you know? 
I, I, I definitely could sort of lose it. That was, that was what editors, you know, when an editor was really useful to me where it's like, oh yeah, like sometimes I, I just kind of get lost in my own thoughts about it and, and kind of expect people to expect readers to cover more of the distance between us rather than sort of reaching out. You know what I mean? I yeah. think that sometimes you can, you can expect, you can expect not saying expect too much out of people, but, it, but just sort of saying like uh, expect them to sort of like come into, you know, like read your mind a little bit more than people want to, especially when your comic is only is coming out only every so often. Right. Right. I gotcha. Well, anyway, um, season two, really good. Uh, the best so far, in my opinion. And um, with that, I think we could jump into season three. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, season three was kind of like it's it's I, I I if if I were to rank it so far right now, I think it would be season two at the at in the first place, season one in like second place, and season three in like third place. To be honest, mm, cool. right? Even even though season three has like one of my favorite issues with the whole um, humongo musical that you play. <laughs> like that was a really great like issue for me. Um, that's a that's a divisive issue. I gotta say, a lot of people, <laughs> people a lot of people said it's their last least favorite of the whole run. And oh, it's like, man. okay, that's I mean that's fair. Like it's a, it was a big swing. Like you you're either gonna you're either gonna hit a home run or uh, or strike out, and maybe both at the same time. Yeah, when I when I hear that, all I can think is like, damn, I guess we all can't have good taste, huh? But <laughs> <laughs> well, but, and I um, think too, like I think it really depends on how you feel about Hamilton too. Like, oh, it, I mean, definitely. <laughs> and like UK friends are like, what is people's deal with Hamilton? Like, what is that even? Why do you even like that that show at all? And it's like, I don't know, you know, fun. <laughs> but I but I also think, and some people do not have any tolerance for reading like rhyming couplets in comics, and it's like uh, I mean, fair, I, totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well in my opinion i loved it i thought it was great i'm not a hamilton fan i don't think i i don't think i've seen hamilton um I'm, i mean i don't really plan to but um i really love that issue um, yeah I, I, th- I think you did a really good job with that issue and i mean I, you know i love hamilton but i also think it was really fun to sort of take something where you're like okay i'm i'm gonna think of rap lyrics that kind of that basically that where i could kind of it was fun to sort of like go in on just a single movie, like the just the original Godzilla, so and and kind of tell sort of deep, like deep cut jokes about just that, you know, like like references to Raymond right. Burr and like, you know, oh, instead yeah. of instead of awesome. like kind of having to have like every instead of having every joke kind of like, kind of cover the the length and breadth of all of kaiju movies. It was fun to just you know drill down on one of them oh uh, yeah and i think i think it works perfectly because like oh yeah what what would be the hamilton to kaijus <laughs> it would be like gojira right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah right, right. that's that pretty that's pretty spot on and i really well, i really like that and i also i mean i not that this was ever sort of explicitly stated as canon but i i like the idea that the characters like the monster movies in that world are basically as the same thing as sort of like real world historical figures that have kind of moved into legend so that like godzilla would be like like king arthur it's like well yeah i mean he was probably a real person but like but the stories have sort of subsumed anything true about him you know that that kind of stuff and so i like the idea that that yeah they'd be telling the story of godzilla as if it were this you know the ancient text you know (laughs) right exactly they're um i was about to say gilgamesh but that might be too much way older than i thought well, I mean, yeah, um, like in in a way, like that. There's that. There's no sort of like canonical story story of it, even though there obviously is. Like that, that they would be telling. You know, there's a thousand interpretations of it. You know, so. right? Oh, so anyway, with season three, I felt like um, there's a lot. I, in my opinion, I think. Well, in my opinion, I, there's a lot of like, um, like, what's the word? I wrote it down. A lot of um, like tidying up like loose ends, you know. Yeah. The the because I because knowing like where the next season four goes, like in retrospect, looking through season three, it's kind of like oh, you're covering a lot of like you're, you're making sure you're you're um 
cl- closing loose ends so that we could jump into the next season a little bit more fresher. Um, mm-hmm. the, what, what do you think? What do you think about that? Yeah, no, that's you, true. You that's, that's true. That's I mean, it was the first season that didn't have sort of a, a premise to it. You know, like, yeah, yes. like the, the first season was sort of like, well, you know, like this is, you know, it, it, the premise is the premise of the whole series, which is Monsters right. in Prison. But then the second one was like, oh, okay, like being on being on the land, living outside the law, et cetera, et cetera. And then mm-hmm. the third one was, I mean, the third one I kind of now say like, oh, well, it's about gangs. And it's like, yeah, it is. But like, it, it was kind of like, uh, yeah, like you say, like I was going back to the prison and I was sort of, sort of, you know, tidying finishing out, all, tidying, tightening up these loose ends and like, you know, uh, killing off characters that i hate drawing and stuff like that <laughs> you know and so <laughs> no, gotcha. uh, and so like yeah like and and in a way like i really because that it ended with this sort of like sort of orgy of violence with this this sort of fight that was kind of that was fun i mean it, i felt like that was a fun not fun but i mean it was a it was a, a fitting end to all that sort of stuff and you know and then we could i could have the seeming end of uh daniel the goat story and the you know like this seeming end of woofy's story and like i could kind of like in a way wrap all that sort of stuff up and like you say like sort of clear the decks for for season four where it was basically like we're we're not even gonna see any of these characters for you know for a, year. For a while yeah, yeah yeah like um i i don't think we jump back on like woofy's story until like season six maybe is when we we kind of see them like again yeah maybe, he think. might i mean he might show up just in a he, i mean he shows up right but like he doesn't, he doesn't really like get involved in the story until season six right yeah in fact i just i put him in he's in a he's in the background like he, he basically is like is in the background of a panel just to, because i was like oh i remember people kind of saying that they thought that he died and oh. so i was like oh i'm gonna i'm just gonna make sure that people know that he he didn't die oh uh, I, I i fought the i fought um i fought Hellmouth died too in this season to be to be honest oh yeah oh well i meant people to i meant people to think that you know like oh okay but, like that oh yeah his arm's been torn off but then i was like oh actually you know i wanted to kill him off because he was so hard to draw because he has so many tattoos but then i was like well if i tear off one of his arms maybe that's one that's so less hard tattoos. to draw <laughs> <laughs> but uh but I also like he's such an he's such a good villain. I was like, oh, I gotta. Get oh back yeah, for a definitely, bit. definitely. There's there's a, there is an assortment of very kind of like just uh, awful kaiju's in this series. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is also the season where um, they you, you kill off Zahn like permanently. Oh yeah, yeah. That was and again, it's like I thought he was gonna. I kind of thought he was gonna come back. Uh, well, I originally was going to kill him off in the first season because he's bad. He's a bad guy, I, and it's like, let's kill him off. Great. You know, you but, know what? It, it's so funny you say that because rereading season one, like when 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 he first gets like stabbed, in my head I thought like, oh yeah, season one he dies. I remember that. And then right. <laughs> when I got to season two, I'm like, wait a second, he's still alive. Right. right. Oh yeah. wait, yeah, I mean, he is still alive. <laughs> it was kind of a cheap move, but I also I liked that there was that weird scene where she goes into the wound and like ties up the the arteries and stuff like that i was just like yeah. oh it's just so gross like I, I liked it i just liked how how sort of messed up it was and like there's even like a commentary somebody saying that you know referring to something else but saying like man that's kind of messed up like <laughs> just like yeah i know everybody that's weird and you know. no no that's perfect that <laughs> i think it works but it's like so, yeah he, he was a he was such a bad character that i had to like i kind of had to kill him twice because he was so so awful and i think then, that's fine you know and i wanted to you know and i wanted to sort of show that like oh well this you know mechazon sort of like he has all these he sort of says that he would never harm anyone but he's kind of tired of it like maybe he would but then he doesn't even get to do it i mean he, uh, he ends up a uh, mechazon does end up killing that one guy who yeah. like murdered his father right yeah well yeah. and i i like i i kind of like that it was like he didn't really he wasn't even really going to do it except that his sister said that she was going to do it so he's like well if if i do it then she doesn't do it and go to jail <laughs> right, right, exactly. Uh, what, what else again? Yeah, a lot of like very kind of like important things happen in season three, but yeah. I think the fact that there isn't like an over, uh, there isn't too much of an overarching like premise. Right. Um. It's it kind of like I don't know. It, it feels like just like a collection of moments. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and- not to say it's like. It's it's like bad. I I still think I still like was kept reading it because I thought like oh I love where 
all this is going. Yeah, I mean, I I think that, right. Yeah, but um, I kind of like that it doesn't have a that it doesn't have a focus. Like I kind of like that it doesn't that it isn't sort of like like on on a like it, that it isn't on rails of a big store uh, serving a bigger story. I kind of like that it's just sort of in a way a you know a bunch of sort of unrelated stories that are kind of woven together. Mm. Did I lose you? No, 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 oh. no. I'm I'm still here. <laughs> no, I was just flipping for the last one because the last issue of uh, season three. Because I remember, I think last time I told you that I was very disappointed that the cover showed a prison riot, but we don't see too much of like the actual like prisoners <laughs> getting like hit. On the reread, though, I, I appreciated it a lot more. So um, I, I guess I take back my negative comments about that. <laughs> Um, well again it's like the 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 prison riot itself is is a little bit it's like the violence of it uh, uh, itself is a little off brand for the series like i it's yeah yeah it's almost more like the strongest thing about kaiju max is the drama is the writing not too much like the fights or the violence really right well and it's always like the it's more like oh i'll show the aftermath of things happening yeah you know you you don't have to yeah and it's like you know it's you you you're doing your different take on kaiju. You don't like we we already seen kaiju's fight like all the time. We don't need, right, right. We don't need that because you're coming at it from a different angle, right? Yeah. Um, I guess you could say season three is like more or less like Daniel's story, right? Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, he's um, got sort of the biggest through line. R- you know, right. Like starts and, to the beginning and goes to the end. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But yeah, I think. Hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe it could it could have been like I mean you you seem to be like pleased with how it came out, and I think that's ultimately what matters. Um, maybe there could have been a a stronger I don't even know if I want to say a stronger focus on Daniel because I think there is, but still I feel like with me personally like I'm missing something out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean I I don't know like it, it's I feel like there's a lot of you know with with all these seasons it's like oh yeah some sometimes it's uh i don't know like there every season i think is like you know about 80 to 80 percent as good as i wanted it to be okay <laughs> you know what i mean, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean I, I, every time every time i look at them i'm like oh yeah i wish i you know i wish i'd done this a little bit better i wish i'd done that a little bit better i think that season two and three both have like endings that i enjoy like i feel like they, oh, yeah. they, they lead up to a big moment and i think that that's always that's always fun I, the big thing about season three is that i felt like this is the t- the moment that the art really came together like mm. all of a sudden i felt like there's no like panels that i'm like ugh, that's the worst is there a is there a moment in a season three where you're like oh yeah that just came out like in your opinion was just kind of like one of your favorite i I guess favorite art favorite piece of art like how it came out i guess oh i mean yeah i mean i i mean i'm always going to choose like a weird little you know weird little panels of like please please choose a weird little panel i literally (laughs) have all the comics right in front of me I mean, yeah, I I liked I liked the the theatrical like lighting on all the monsters when they did the Hamilton thing. And oh then, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I mean, I think that those are I think those are really fun. I like that there's a that shot from backstage. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I like there was one of the things that I liked about the final issue was that it was when there's all those flames and so there's like a sort of an orange and yellowish cast to a whole bunch of scenes where like oh yeah that i think that that really kind of felt it felt nice because it sort of felt like oh this is like real stuff it it felt it it felt i don't know i don't know if cinematic's the right term because it's a comic book and it should be a comic book but like the idea that it was that like things things felt a little bit uh like things are happening like there was a lot of stuff happening around them there was a lot of haze that was sort of like could give things depth that could give things a I mean, sense that I like mean, there's it, it things moving like around it, it, it that did make it really feel like a finale for the for the season um yeah, yeah you're, talking, you're talking about the last the last issue of season three, yeah right? the last issue yeah 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 that it felt very like it felt very appropriate like oh yeah this this here is your finale like this here is like because we haven't seen a prison riot yet so far in our prison drama right 
<laughs> and I and I think yeah, it looked really appropriate. And I think you, I think you did a really good job. I think I would say that maybe the last is I I did like the finale for season three, you know, like I think yeah, I think it was a really good finale. Um, overall though, I think I still keeping like where I got my rank currently on for the seasons. I think it's still like the same for me, you know. Yeah. 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 But anyway, um, I let me let me say my two favorite kaiju from um, this season would be uh, the the little like crayon humongos. I thought that was really <laughs> funny, right? That maybe that is my favorite panel. That little that <laughs> dumb yeah, gag. It's such a dumb gag, and no, I love it's, it. it's really <laughs> it's really awesome. Um, I'm I'm kind of disappointed those guys never came back though. And this was I, I guess the musical was like their their finale for the characters. You know? Yeah, they'd run their course, and I didn't know what else to do with them after that. And and especially now that they're tiny, it's like every every time you would have to have them inter like interact with another character, you you come up against all these problems of scale, you right. know. And and it it doesn't uh, it, it was nothing nothing sort of came to me about it. And I just sort of felt like well, you know, they they can just sort of be around, you know. And I, right. I kind of like when characters are just like you can have a character sort of have their moment and then it's like well they don't have to they don't have either have to die or you know or win they can just kind of continue to exist with their life less stressful <laughs> you know right. like a, a, a lot of people kind of were like well i wish that the main character of electric girl was still sort of like the main character and it's like yeah i know but like i, I, I after really a certain bother. point yeah yeah, after a certain point, that feels like torture, you know, where it's just like, oh, this this person's just going to be going through it every minute of every day for all time. It's like I don't yeah. want, to, I don't want to do that to my made up fake characters, you know. Like, yeah, I I, I think um, I I never came across that problem. I like oh, Electric Gore isn't the main character no more. Well, like he, the the thing is like we have so many like other like plot threads that you introduce so many like other direct other like characters who have very interesting things going on for them so i'm not like i'm not taken aback when you decide to focus on another character for a season right you know well that's the that's the hope you know that you that you're like well i don't he's not the main character but i got these other good main characters right you know like <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah i get you and i mean i mean to be honest i i like i think electric gore is a very like um is a very interesting character to follow but he's not like my favorite kaiju out of right. like the he, series, you know. He's a little um, bit bland. I mean, I tried to make him. I tried to give him a little bit of a temper or whatever, but yeah, to got, make him a little bit more of a a nuanced character. But really, he's just a he's a blank slate for that first issue, so that you can go like, oh, here's somebody who's never been to, to prison to monster prison before, who can sort of learn things as we learn things, and and have some stakes in that he's got his kids. But it's like, well, that's all kind of meant to be as general as possible so that you can relate to him. Right. You know, and, right. and I, and I felt like, well, you know, we've got all these characters that have sort of gone halfway through their journey. Let's, let's maybe follow them for a while. Right. Exactly. Okay. And my other favorite Kaiju is like, um, like I, I like like the hell moth character. Um, <laughs> and like, he kind of disappears for after like what issue one, he doesn't really like show up again. Until, well, he was like, yeah, he was outside. He was uh, you're, right, you know, yeah. And and then in season in season three, he comes back in a very major way. And I really like um like the new look. Like oh wow, he's like, <laughs> I I I would call him like punish Hellmouth because he's <laughs> been through like it seems like he he went through some some awful shit because he's just he's like now disabled. He doesn't have like he's missing one of his wings. Yeah, right. He's got an eye <laughs> yeah. patch now. It's like yeah, he he's been through. Looks like the gutter, but that doesn't like, it doesn't like humble him really. It kind of no. makes him more violent. <laughs> right. right. No, he's just, yeah. I, it, it's, I mean, I, uh, sometimes I, I struggle with having villains that are, uh, villains that are not just boring, but then also right. are not too relatable. Like, I, the, there's a line to walk with that where you, you, like, they're not just doing evil for the funsies, but mm -hmm. they're not, but they're not like, a relatable character that you can like it's like sometimes that's kind of hard <laughs> hard to do or you because mm -hmm. i mean there's really only a handful of characters in this series that are really evil evil yeah and so and so uh yeah it was it was trying to like give him a goal or a 
you know, a, a sort of a viewpoint that would make him mm-hmm. like, yeah, all right. I can believe that somebody would have that. I don't share it. That guy's bad. You know, <laughs> yeah, kill him yeah, I mean, as soon as possible. You, kind you, of you're thing. trying to you're trying to make him three dimensional. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think that the you know I think, and sometimes I think it's sometimes it's okay to have a, a villain who's just bad, <laughs> just a yeah, bad guy, true. and he just wants to and he's and he's mad and he wants to kill this person. It's like all right, fine. That doesn't have to be anything more than that. Right. Um, exactly. <laughs> I, I think the I think the real villain of Kaiju Max is society, really. If well, and that's me. the that's the idea that you're. <laughs> I mean, because it's like, yeah, because because these because villains get killed off all the time, but I mean, nothing gets better, you know. Like that's that doesn't oh, solve, yeah, any, exactly. solve yeah, anybody's like one, problems except yeah, for two one guy, seconds. Yeah, one guy gets murdered. That's not going to fix everything. Yeah. All right. So. In fact, you might even argue that that makes things worse. True. When you murder people, I don't know. I mean, I'm just spitballing here. Yeah, I don't. I don't know much about. I don't know much about murder. <laughs> yeah. Not a not a big murder. Luckily. Head. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have a lot of experience with murder either. Right, but anyway, um, I think um, yeah. After season three, I we, we jump into season four, and season four is like one of my favorite seasons. Um, yeah, and I I think it really does kind of like. Not I wasn't I wasn't losing interest in Kaiju Max. I was still a fan, right? I was still recommending it to people at this point, but season four really kind of like not pull me back in but like really like kind of grew my interest like way more because then it's like sure you're still doing the prison setting but now you're like oh you're coming at it from a different angle and now we're, we're at the women prison wing of kaiju max right well i think that there's a lot to be said for something that i mean you i don't think that i don't think that there's anything about this that makes you say like oh you could just jump into it cold but you but there i think that right away you're meant to know like all right all the stuff that's going to happen in this one i'm basically going to have to set up like there's you know a couple things you can kind of like say all right this happened before this person we've seen before they were arrested this character has you know it's been arrested but like but i kind of felt like yeah like uh, it's interesting to hear you say that i haven't heard anybody say that before but it makes sense that like that this would be sort of a way to pull people back in because it's not just more of the same uh-huh. It's meant to be it's meant to be something where it's like, OK, now we're going to tell something, a new story within the same world that has threads from the other one. But uh, I, but basically everything, everything that's going to happen in here is going to be set up and paid off. Um, I, I think also what I really like is, um, I mean, te- technically speaking, this is the second half of Kaiju Mac. This is the start yeah. of the second half. And this and season four reminds me a lot of season one. But but I would say that, like, in the ranking, I would put season four above season one right because mm, okay. i i feel like the um i feel like a lot of the premises and like a lot of what the characters like go through like i think first of all you don't have like you don't really have that blank slate character with i mean mm-hmm. except for um what, what's her name uh dr zhang yeah yeah like she, she kind of like is the stand-in for the blank slate character but she has her own stuff going on Right, too, you but, know. but she, you know, she can be the one who's learning about it, right? Even if she's not a blank slate, like we know her, but yeah, right, exactly. And I and I think that that was really clever of you to do. I I really like like that. And um, a lot of like the returning characters aren't like, oh, you remember this person? It's it's very much like, here's a character, and they have a thing going on that like you don't have to have like read their appearance and so and so issue to right. kind of guess get what their gist is like they have like this just reintroduced you know and yeah I- and it's like i mean yeah like well i think it's fun that like a well i was really happy that i could say in the second season i i had a character mention go go space baby and oh, i'm yeah. like that that name rules i gotta have that you know it's <laughs> like okay here's a female character i'm gonna have this character show up and then i was like okay well, what would she be like okay let's give her like a weird like beehive hairdo and oh i you know and I then, but then also like the the fact that she was pregnant, like I felt like that was a big thing that I wanted to cover in the in the women's prison that you know is different from the men's prison. Obviously, that doesn't right. happen in the men's prison so much. You, you could have <laughs> you could have made a reference to um the 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 TriStar Godzilla movie and how he kind of oh, like, yeah, yeah. asexually reproduces eggs or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right oh, yeah but um, about that one yeah yeah but what uh, a lot of people don't think about that movie <laughs> <laughs> but um i think uh yeah it's go go space baby is unironically like one of my favorite kaijus like out of the series and um 
I was very happy when she came back in uh, the final season, right? Yeah. And I yeah. like I'm a big fan of the name. I'm a big fan of like how she looks. You know, I, I guess yeah. I'm jumping ahead by saying which is like my favorite kaiju of this. Yeah. I really like where her story goes. It really kind of like it's it's like oh yeah, it's it's kind of sad. She's pregnant in prison. You know, yeah. she has to give up her baby, but then she's like, oh her 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 son is literally like the son of of the psychopath character from the last season. Right. right? And that like you really froze for a loop. I, I really that's what I really liked about season four. There was like a lot of like throwing us for like loops, you know, about like, oh, where is like this going? What is this angle, you know? Yeah. That I mean, I gotta say that that was that moment, the birth was maybe my favorite moment of the whole series not awesome. just the mo- not just the moment but like i felt like that was one of the times that i felt like i was sort of firing on all cylinders like in terms of the pacing i felt like that last scene reads really fast and really like you know that it has you can tell the sort of connection that they have between them and then that moment that it just like gets completely shot to hell oh yeah <laughs> I, I that was that i felt like I'd been building up to that for a while. And I don't feel like most of these issues have like a twist or a, like a surprise ending. And it, and so I think it's kind of fun that people weren't really expecting that. And, uh, and that it was, uh, you know, that it was, oh, yeah. and that it was earned too, that it wasn't just sort of like, Oh, I'm going to ruin something that was good. It was like, well, I'm, you know, th- this, these are the, this is the fallout when you, you know, have murdered people. Oops! Sometimes you run into the people that cared about the people you murdered. Oh <laughs> you yeah, know, like... I mean, you, you really do a good job of of like um, you, you do a really good job of like expanding the world, but never, but like always being really good at reincorporating stuff you already like have in the world. It's like I mean, it's so cool that like I, that issue specifically, the birth one, is my favorite issue of season four. And um, you you literally start that yeah. issue with like um, like Zon getting killed, and then at the end it's like Zon's son being born. Yeah, right. And that, and that that's was so really like just, poetic, you know. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a book ending almost. Well, and again, it's like when, sort of talking about making sure that people are kind of getting their money's worth. It's like I always kind of wanted to say like, I'm going to provide you with the context. I'm not going to provide you with all the back history of you know of everything that's happened when you read this issue, but I am going to hopefully give you the context that you need to understand that moment so that like you go, you know, so that I, I had to show him one more time because I felt like the big reveal at the end was visual only mainly. And, uh, and so um, that I needed to sort of remind people what this character looked like and show uh-huh. that she, mer- and show un, 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 uh, sort of unambiguously that she murdered him you know yeah yeah and then, obviously. and then move and then move through this whole story i mean it, there is a lot of like i mean I, I feel like sometimes when you when you write a story and you're like i wonder you know i'm trying to think of things that will happen in this issue and it's like sometimes when you just write write or like conceive of the final scene the and especially one that has like a big reveal it's like you realize oh my gosh i have so much work to do to set that up so that it'll have the proper impact right <laughs> so, exactly. like, and so you can almost write the story backwards by saying like well what all do i need to set up to make sure that this works yeah yeah it's like yeah it's a like, i think i think comedians do that with their jokes where it's like you have to think of the punchline first right yeah so right. you can like come up with the setup to it you know and yeah. um i i think i don't know if this is like what your mentality was with um this season but it really feels like Season four is kind of like you remaking season one, you know, mm-hmm. but like, I, I just like it like way better. Like, for example, I, I thought it was so clever that the wardens in um, the women prison have this kind of like, they, they kind of have this like, um, oh, everyone gets to say kind of thing. And it's like, what's, what's the best way to visually represent that? It's like, oh, they, they form Voltron basically. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's, yeah. that's just like perfect. Like, oh, that's like the perfect little like visual metaphor yeah. for that you know yeah speaking of characters that i'm kicking myself for designing yeah like <laughs> oh, every man. time i had to draw that character at full size i was like oh my lord what am oh, i doing mind. <laughs> yeah it, it's so I funny mean, it's you great say design that. it's a fun design but boy what, what was i thinking it, it's so funny you say that because i think my favorite cover of issue um for of season four is like 
that last cover oh man of yeah. issue six of just like yeah. just like goat getting like her shit rocked by like a yeah. punch in the face that was really great um, yeah that that was a uh that took forever <laughs> oh yeah it, it looks like it looks like it did yeah i could i could see that but uh, but it's like awesome that, it was worth it it was worth it i do I like the the wince like the wincing on the face of the of the tiger when oh, yeah. <laughs> being used as to punch her you know? oh, i never even noticed He's that like, ow <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yes yeah that's... i that that final issue th- this is this was a, an issue or like i wasn't 100 percent happy with that final issue because i felt like i was cramming so much in uh-huh. um but i really i really did like the final moment of it you know with the with baby and all of his armor falling off oh yeah that was like uh, perfect and like i that's... thought that that was yeah it's really nice and i mean it was it was one of those it was funny too because it's like you could count the number of like full page panels in this series on one hand probably like um and so it was kind of fun to sort of say like okay like i'm gonna quote you know budget this out you know like i'm gonna budget a full page to this moment um which i I normally would never do i think i think um what was i gonna what was i gonna say I, yeah, I think uh, that's another thing that I really like. Um, wait, let me see if I got that in my notes. But yeah, that that ending was pretty good, and it's a really like good, like resolution. I think to like where that plot line was heading with the with those characters, and this might be the third time you like you've done a scene where a human has to go inside a kaiju. Yeah, right. right yeah the, the first time was when like uh gupta had to go inside like that kaiju's like cloaca oh yeah right yeah, yeah. and <laughs> second time is like going inside um zon's like arteries right yeah. i i don't know if you do that for i don't think you do that for a fourth or fifth time in the other seasons but i don't i don't know i was certainly never doing it on purpose like i as a as a checkbox you right know? <laughs> i i think it might be like i i think Actually, I didn't even know if this might have been a subconscious thing you were doing, but like the first time someone goes inside a kaiju, it's kind of like, kind of just gross, right? And the yeah. second time, it's kind of like this weird, like yeah, toxic, ro- yeah, romantic <laughs> kind of thing. And the, the the third time is this very like like sincere like character moment, yeah. You know, the, so it's kind of oh, like it requires extreme bravery and yeah, yeah. So every time like. A, a, a character goes inside a kaiju it gets slightly better every time yeah right no right, yeah and i think uh actually wait a second no there is there is um i think in season five there's a flashback uh we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it but um let me, let me see in my notes i think um yeah i think i mentioned that go go space baby favorite favorite kaiju of this um season um oh i really like um i really also like a lot of the women kaiju designs i feel like um tell me if this was something that was going through your head but i i I think that like um you you look back at all the kaijus you already designed and then for the women prison you you thought to yourself okay what hasn't like what have i not done yet so you have to kind of go to the not to the extremes but to the kind of like more weirder looking creatures Uh i guess because it, it feels, because yeah. I really like, kind of like resonate a lot more with the women Caillou designs, you know. Yeah, and I think I was getting, I was getting better, and I, and I was also, I, when I was originally designing stuff in the first season, it's like I, I had really only watched a couple Kaiju movies, right? Uh, and and so, by you know, four years later, I was like, oh, I've watched a ton of them, and now I have like, now I have a sort of a smarter approach where I can sort of say like, oh, okay, like let's right. look at, let's look at this you know franchise and see if there's something good in there you um, um you observed a little bit more of the kind of design philosophy that goes well and i the kaijus. and i sort of had decided too, like what's what's in bounds for this series too like uh you know oh like like uh i mean i i i, I always regret not using um this character more the uh uh the lady um uh, character called lady who's basically the lady of the lake and who gives people swords <laughs> like she was she's kind of my favorite character design and the sort of my favorite idea behind her um but uh but yeah she's basically just designed based on um uh the character of sigmund sigmund the sea monster from that sort of sid and marty croft show 